Okay, this is chapter 3, section 1, uh, day 2. Um, starting off today uh, with a little bit of review of function notation and exactly what it means. Um, it says in this graph, or I'm sorry, with this function notation that f of 3 equals 8 and f prime of 3 equals 2. And you got to remember what both of those things mean. If I draw a graph here. Again, it's very important we know what function notation stands for. This value here is the x value. So we're plugging in 3 to our function, and the result is 8. Now the result is the y value. So when x is 3, we get 8 for a value. That's what f of 3 equals 8 means. Now, f prime of 3 means the slope, when x equals 3, of the tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line is 2. So that would be something like this, not for the graph, but for the tangent line. So to draw a graph that has a tangent line there, it might look like this. So at 2, I had a tangent line with a slope of, I'm sorry, at 3, I had a slope of a tangent line that was 2. Okay. Graphing the derivative. Um, for you to graph the derivative, it's important that you can estimate slope. Um, first of all, you have to know if it's positive or negative and then give it some kind of estimate. The first thing you should realize is when you have a graph that's like 45 degrees, um, like this one here, um, you need to know that that has a positive slope and the rise and the run are about the same, so this is a slope of positive 1. At least that's a good estimation. Now, something that is steeper than that, the slope is going to go up. So this one over here, what kind of slope does that one have? It's positive, and it's more than 1. So, again, it's a guess, but three, 3 might be a good guess. I would accept 5 or 2 or whatever you think. Um, just know that it's more than 1. And the one to the right of 1 here, again, that's going to be less than 1, but not 0. So maybe that one is a half. And this one, finally, is even less steep, closer to zero, so maybe that's one-fifth. Again, these are just estimations, and that's what I'm looking for you to do. The red ones, again, find the one that's closest to negative one. Again, I would probably say this one is close. This one to the left here, this one, is definitely closer to zero, so that would be a slope of maybe negative one-fourth. Again, totally an estimation. Uh, as long as it's less than negative one, you're good. This one's definitely steeper, but more negative. And almost vertical, now we're talking maybe um, negative 9 or negative 8 or negative 12, something like that, something steep. So those are going to help us estimate how to graph the derivative. Here we're supposed to estimate the slope of the function. And what I'd like you to do is estimate the slope of the function at all these letters. So starting with, let's start with, um, Let's start with E. What you want to do here is go to the graph at E and think of where the tangent line would be. The tangent line would probably look something like this. And then you want to estimate, well, what's that slope? I think the slope of that green line is zero. It's horizontal. So I'm going to graph at E, at point E, I'm going to graph the slope. 
zero. That's going to be my first coordinate of my derivative, which would be right here. Now I'm going to go to D and go up, and here's where I think D meets on this graph. I'm going to draw a little tangent line in there, and now I'm going to estimate that slope. I'm going to say at D it's definitely negative and maybe negative 1. So at D, I'm going to plot D negative 1. So maybe that is right here. Going to C, I have something that, the way I drew it in, just less than 0. So maybe C is negative 1 ninth. So now we're talking right here. I have B drawn in a tangent line. That slope looks really close to 1, I think. Again, totally an estimation. But that's all we need. And at A, well, it looks like this curve is going to keep going this way, and the tangent line is going to be really close to that. So I would say, again, A is going to have a slope close to 1. So I'm going to put that right there. So going over to the right, uh, at F, the tangent lines will look really close to this graph. So again, probably close to 1. I want to have that there. G. That slope is really close to 0. I'll just call it 0. Plot mm. that point. And H looks like 0 also. So now what I want to do is connect the dots. And it looks like the slope from about here on is all negative 1. So maybe go something like that. And it appears that this one kind of keeps going this way. So highlighting that again, this is the slope of the tangent line everywhere on this graph. So this is the graph of the derivative. So you could go along and estimate slopes at a bunch of different spots and then connect the dots is one way of doing that. When you have a piecewise function, like this one looks like it has about seven parts or so, the derivative graph is going to look quite different. When you look at the farthest left point here, from here to here the slope is constant. It's, it's a straight line. And so we need to find the slope of that line, because the tangent line and that line are exactly the same slope. So if I use y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, I should be able to find the slope of this line. So it's negative 1 minus a negative 2, negative 4 minus a negative 7. So it looks like 1 over 3. So the slope of this is 1 third. Now, it's one third from negative four and forever to the left. So the slope is going to be one third from here on. That's all one third. So when I graph the derivative, I'm going to graph this as one third. Now, between the next two points, I have a line also. And the slope of that looks like we're rising 2, 1, 2, and we're running 2. So that slope looks like it's 1. So from, since this is 1 here, and we stop here, so this is all going to be a slope of 1. And I'm going to have to put an open circle here because I filled in this one. And I'll put a closed circle here. Now, this red graph that I just drew has nothing to do with the blue one that I 
that I just drew over here, where I drew this dot on the right, has no significance that it touches that graph. Now, from negative 2 to 0, it looks like I rise 1 and run 2. So now I have a slope of a half. So that's going to be down here somewhere. And that continues until we get to here. And from 0 to 1, we're rising 2, running 1. So we have a slope of 2, which is going to be up here. That should have been an open circle. And we're doing that just for a short distance, just to here. And then the next one looks like we're rising to negative 3 and running 1. So it's negative 3, the slope. So we jump all the way down to here. Do that just for a short domain. And then from here on, it looks like we have the same slope until infinity. So the two dots I have, it looks like we're rising a negative 4 and running 6. So negative 2 thirds. So negative 2 thirds some, somewhere in here less than negative 1. And we're doing that forever. I put an arrow on it. So that is the, the graph of the derivative. So if I deleted this, you can see the graph of the derivative. These dots aren't included. If I take these out of here, this is, and this isn't here either, what's remaining here is the graph of the derivative. It looks much different than the original function. So here was the original function. Again, it looks much different than the derivative. Okay. I'm going to estimate the slope here. I guess we could look at this piecewise function again and list the x's, um, but it looks like the, the slope is going to be constant for, for values from here to here. So if I find the slope of that line, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, Two, three, four. Looks like five over four, and this is at negative six, and this is at negative ten. So from negative ten, when x equals negative ten, all the way to negative six, we are getting the slope of five fourths. Okay, so I could go to negative 10 on my derivative graph over here, go up 5 fourths, which is just a little bit more than 1, and it's going to stay that slope all the way to negative 6. So I'm just going to connect that. It's the same all the way through there. Now, from negative 6 to negative 2, we have a slope of 0. So from negative 6 to negative 2, the slope is 0. So I go to negative 2 and negative 6 and connect between because the slope is constant all the way through there. Then the next line from negative 2 to positive 2 looks like we are rising 4 running for. So from negative 2 to 2, the slope is 1. So I go to 2, and I can make a circle, and go to negative 2, 1, and then we're constant through there. And then finally from negative 2 to, or from positive 2 to 10, we have a slope. And it appears that that one is 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Negative eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Negative eleven eighths. So that'd be negative one and not quite a half. So somewhere in here, open circle. I'm going to do that all the way to the end. That's the graph of the derivative. Here we have a curve. Uh, we're going to do the same exact thing. Um, with curves, probably the easiest way to do this is to find zero for a slope. And the zeros happen on these peaks, like this. So that happens where there's a maximum and a minimum value. So I would plot all of those first. Looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7. Negative 7 is 0. And negative 5 is 0. Negative 3 is 0. Negative 1 is 0. Positive 1 is 0. Positive 3. Positive 5. Positive 7. I'm guessing probably positive 9 also, but the graph stops there. So when you graph the zeros, you know something for sure is going to happen. Between the two zeros, so between the first zero and the second zero here, the graph is either entirely positive for slope or entirely negative for slope. So when you go look through, look at the first two zeros, which over here would be this one and this one, looking at the graph in between, the slope of this line is either always negative or always positive. And if you draw a tangent line in here, you can see that it's definitely negative and negative by quite a bit. But as you get right down towards the end, all of a sudden the tangent lines start zeroing out. So all of a sudden it gets to zero. So this is what you do. Since it's always negative, you draw the graph down and back up because it's back to zero. But it's negative in between. And then between the second and the third zero, the slope is just the opposite. It is positive. And it gets pretty steep again. The slope might get all the way up to five or six, like way up here. And then between the next two zeros, it's negative. That was this line, negative again. Now we turn to positive. So we're going to go positive. And then we go back down here, and this is negative. And then we go back up this way, which is positive. Negative. And we end with positive. And on the other side, we end with positive. Now, looking back at this original graph, if we know anything about graphs, this looks like at zero, it's zero. Well, that happens with the sine curve. This might be some version of the sine curve. And maybe this is our value for negative 1 and positive 1. And that's our sine graph. Well, this one over here looks like we start up here at the max value, which may be, maybe it's 1. Maybe we go all the way down to negative 1. This looks like the cosine graph. And it turns out that sine the derivative of the sine is the cosine graph. And vice versa. The derivative of cosine is sine, almost. It's actually negative sine. The derivative of cosine is sine. So, remember that notation. The derivative of sine x is exactly cosine x.
and the derivative of cosine is happens to be negative sine. Which just kind of flips the graph a little bit. Alright. One more example. Um, again, let's find the zero. It looks like the slope is zero right here. So we can plot zero the at zero the slope is zero. And I'm going to go over here to 3 and draw the tangent line. It looks like that has a slope of maybe 1 half. So 3 is a slope of 1 half. And let's go to negative 3. 1, 2, 3. That well, looks like the slope is about the same. So I'm going to put that at negative 1 half. Let's go to 5. Looks like, like that. Looks like the slope is about 2. So I'm going to go up to 2. Let's go negative 5. 3, 4, 5. That slope looks like 2 also. And if I go out to 7, now the slope looks like maybe, oh, maybe 4. And that's happening on both sides as well. Now looking back at our derivative graph, I think you can recognize what's going on here. It looks like a parabola is going on. So if I sketch the parabola, this is the derivative. Now if we have some idea about what this graph might be, something might appear to us. For the advanced student, you should know that this graph looks much like y equals x cubed. You should also know what this graph looks like. It looks a lot like x squared of some kind. So if you can see the derivative, what happened? Went from the third power to the second power. And that's something that we're going to talk about in some length uh, in the near future, that the degree goes down by one. Assignment page 101, 7 through 10, 16 and 18.